Uh, welcome back friends. Uh, we are going to continue with our topic of gaseous exchange and explosion. And this is uh, session 4 in the subtopic of respiration. So, if you need these notes, you can go to Google Play Store and you can download the Kipaji app. Then you can search for Albert Mel. You can see our logo and then you can download the notes at a very low cost. Then you can continue enjoying advanced biology. So in today's session now we are going to start with the respiration of our carbohydrate. As we said that uh, we have a different respiratory substrate. We can have um, carbohydrates, lipids or proteins. So the major substrate or respiratory substrate is carbohydrate. So it's the one we'll discuss more. And when we are talking of cell respiration, we discuss first of our mechanism on how respiration of carbohydrate takes place. And then later uh, we can discuss about our respiration of fat and respiration of proteins. Now we are going to discuss about the stages of cell respiration basing on the respiration of carbohydrate. And more especially here we are talking of our glucose. So carbohydrate which is in, in the form of a maybe starch, a stratagol digestion in the stomach, the end product which is glucose. Or carbohydrate which is in the form of glycogen must be broken down to form glucose so or must be converted to form glucose so that glucose can enter the respiratory pathway now respiration takes place in all types of living cell and this respiration which takes place in all types of living cell it is called a cell respiration because it is the cellular process which takes place in every cell and that's, why, uh, that's what we explained in the utilization of the gases which um, were killed from the respiratory surface to the respiring tissues. Now, cell respiration, the metabolic process within cells which release energy from organic molecules. We defined this also in the introduction to this topic. And this is just the continuation and elaboration of what we already explained. Now, cell expression of kind of stages. And we have the three stages of cell expression. So we have a uh, gray choricism. We have Krebs cycle, or it is called the TCA. That is tricarboxylic acid cycle, TCA cycle. And also we have the electron or hydrogen transport system. So, in this session, we will discuss only one part, which is glycolysis. And the uh, succeeding sessions, we will discuss about Krebs cycle and electron transport system. So, let's start our discussion by discussing about uh, glycolysis. As the terminology suggests, glyco comes from glucose, and the lysis means breakdown. So glycolysis simply means sugar or glucose breaking because glycolysis uh, involves the breaking of glucose. As we know from our knowledge of biochemistry that glucose is the eggs and sugar having six carbons. So in the process of glycolysis we are breaking sugar with the six carbons into acids, three carbon acidic compound which is pyruvate. So glycolysis, uh, gluco means sugar and lysis means breakdown. So the breakdown of excess sugar, or you can say the breakdown of excess sugar in bracket glucose, usually glucose into two molecules of the three common compound pyruvate or pyruvic acid. 
So part of it, this are uh, the end, which is eight. Sometimes you can call it this pyruvic acid. So uh, sometimes the organic acids, carboxylic acids, they can be abbreviated by eight instead of saying pyruvic acid. So you know, in ic acid, then you are you're putting eight. Now we are breaking down glucose, exhaust sugar, usually glucose, to pyruvate. This reaction is called glycolysis. So glycolysis takes place in several stages. And the detailed mechanism of glycolysis involves 10 steps. So it occurs in all cells in aerobic and anaerobic organism. In anaerobic organism, it is the only stage of respiration because Anaerobic you are sharpen a glycolysis. Krebs cycle requires presence of oxygen. So if there is no oxygen, no Krebs cycle can occur. Initially glucose is insufficiently reactive and so it is phosphorylated prior to being split into triose sugar molecules. So before glycolysis starts, as how we shall see in the steps of glycolysis, it must be activated. For you to to nafanya activation of glucose ko kuifanya phosphorylation and that phosphorylation comes uh, that phosphate comes from ATP. In the manner yesterday in one among the users of ATP we said ATP used to uh, make the molecules react of molecules like glucose before glycolysis starts they must be made reactive. So in the absence of uh, ATP Glucose, uh, glycolysis could not be able to start the initial step of uh, the initial step of uh, glycolysis requires present for ATP. Now, this molecule yields some hydrated atoms. When we are converting our uh, glucose to pyruvate, uh, we are producing some hydrogen atoms. So you need some hydrogen atoms which may be used to give energy in the form of ATP. May be used to give energy in the form of ATP before being converted into pyruvate. So as how we shall see in the mechanism in the reactions of glycolysis, we can also produce the reduced nine. We can also produce the reduced nine. And the, the function of reducing NAD is to carry hydrogen from glycolysis into the electron transport chain where that hydrogen can can release and release ATP. So that's what we said from these molecules they they yield hydrogen atoms which may give energy <coughs> in the form of ATP in the electron transport chain. So during pyruvate formation, the ATP used in phosphorylating the glucose is generated. Glycolysis takes place in the cytoplasm of the cell. So the site where glycolysis takes place in the cell is cytoplasm. And the ATP which is used in first to phosphorylate the, the glucose can be regenerated at the end of the of the reactions of our glycolysis as how we shall see later the raw material or requirement of glycolysis and the end products so the initial stage of glycolysis requires the presence of ATP because uh, this is one among the questions they ask in the exam why ATP is necessary in the initial stage of our glycolysis first the ATP supply the activation energy so as to make the reaction of glycolysis or respiration to start. ATP supply the activation energy for the reaction to start. And the second fact is that ATP make glucose more accessible or more reactive to the enzymes of respiration. So first it is because it supply energy and second activation energy and second it makes glucose more reactive uh, these two reasons they are independent so don't mix and say that uh, if this is not the same reason the answer that it's not the same reason they are two different 
uh, reasons. Now, uh, let's start to discuss the, the detailed mechanism on how glycolysis tend to occur. Detailed mechanism on how glycolysis occur. Let's us, uh, see step by step how can we describe the process of glycolysis, how it takes place in the cell and the end products which can occur in the cell. Now, by stages of glycolysis, it comprises of 10 stages, as I told you. And for the students, it is very important for you to know each of the steps, explanation of how it happens, and the enzyme which catalyzes. I know this is the one among the parts which is uh, very tough or oh. I don't know if Yeah, I remember when I studied I remember when I studied A level chemistry. When I studied uh, I mean A level biology. My fellow students they asked uh, for the teacher to repeat this part uh, several times. Or most it was like three times. And the reason behind it was because uh, they didn't understand what is going on. Now here we'll have uh, just a, a short explanation. But a further explanation of the stages of glycolysis can be done either in the separate session or in this session. Now, um, in the first step, uh, glucose molecule is phosphorylated to make to make it more reactive. So the phosphoric molecule comes from the conversion of ATP to ADP, and the reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme hexokinase. During the process, glucose is converted to glucose six phosphate. So this is the first uh, the first reaction in which glucose is phosphorylated in the presence of phosphohexokinase or you can say hexokinase simply hexokinase or phosphohexokinase with the same enzyme uh, a kinase is an enzyme which catalyzes phosphorylation so hexo hexo is because this is the hexo sugar so hexokinase a kinase enzyme which catalyzes phosphorylation of hexosugar. So it is very easy for you to remember. Hexokinase. So glucose, then ATP to ADP, glucose 6 phosphate. That means a phosphate, you may end up attached to carbon acetate. Phosphate, you may end up attached to carbon acetate. You may end up attached to glucose 6 glucose 6 phosphate. When step your period, uh, the second step is just isomerization. So isomerization or rearrangement into its isomer, fructose 6 phosphate. So to now move to glucose 6 phosphate, to move fructose 6 phosphate. Now, upper enzyme is to make a phosphohexoisomerase. Here I'm going to call phosphohexokinase. I'm going to kinase in enzyme on a canyonini phosphorylation. So phosphohexokinase is because phosphorylation. And here the second step is glucose six phosphate is rearranged into is iso fructose six phosphate. Reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme phosphohexoisomerase. Now because the reaction which takes place here is isomerization, so the name changes here and becomes isomerase isomerase from kinase to isomerase so you know phosphohexo isomerase from part of fructose 6 phosphate from there in the third step to now another phosphate and the phosphate liquefania more reactive more reactive na iweze ku reactive zuri with enzymes now in the third step in the third step Further phosphorylation takes place by donation of another phosphate. Donation of another phosphate molecule from ATP to make sugar, let more reactive. 
so fructose 1,6 diphosphate is produced and the reaction is catalyzed by phosphofructokinase. Now you see the name of the enzyme up in a body to phosphor. Kulemonzoni to refanya phosphorylation to refanyana phosphor phosphohexokinase. Hexo it can hexo sugar. So glucose is the hexo sugar also our fructose is the hexo sugar. So saying uh, saying phosphohexokinase that means I will just specify the hexo sugar. Like in part to conafanya kwa glucose. Now we have the specific sugar which is catalyzed, it is fructose. So that's why we are saying it is phosphofructokinase, fructo. Fructose is because the it is because the the sugar here it is specifically fructose. So we are ending up with the fructose one comma six the phosphate. That means have a phosphate company um carbon sita. Apa na kuna phosphate mbili kwenye kaboni ya kwanza na kaboni ya sita. Oru ni oru yeye inakuwa tu ni mekanizmu mbayo. Inakuwa tu ni mekanizmu mbayo seli. Inazidi kufanya ili kuweza kugeini mongu. Kuweza kugeini. Kufanya reaction zake za glycolis vizuri. Kwa hiyo, unazo kona hapo fructose 6 phosphate. Phosphofructokinase ATP ADP fructose one comma six diphosphate. Now from there, um, stages glycolysis in your organism glycolysis in an involving two major stages. First is the activation of glucose. Second is the splitting. To now say glycolysis is the splitting of exosome. Go to me to men's and a step your kwanza to me phosphorylate to make more reactive. Step your pill to me isomerize. Step your trap to me phosphorylate. Step your end of the splitting in here. So in the fourth step, the six carbon sugar is split into four, into two. I mean, is split into two, three carbon sugars, which are isomers of each other. So one among the sugar is uh, an aldehyde which is phosphoglycer aldehyde and another sugar is a ketone which is dihydroxyl acetone phosphate. So we have phosphoglycer aldehyde that means it is an aldehyde containing phosphate. So the sugar is glycer aldehyde but it contains phosphate that's why we are writing this PGAL phosphoglycer aldehyde. And, um, Sometimes you can call it as glycyl aldehyde phosphate. It's the same because it is the glycyl aldehyde is the sugar and aldehyde. But a phosphate is the group which is attached to the sugar. So we are making two uh, three carbon sugars, which one among them is an aldehyde and another which is hydroxyl acetone phosphate. This is the the ketone. Now the reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme adolescence. The enzyme is called adolescence or avulase. So, uh, this enzyme you must know it by its name. No any explanation I can add to you behind this enzyme. But the enzyme is called adolescence or avulase. Now, fructose 1, 6 diphosphate, uh, which is 6 carbon compound, is split into dihydroxyl acetone, which is 3 carbon compound. And the phosphoglycer aldehyde, which is a three carbon compound. And the stage number five, stage number five, reaction number five is very easier to remember because uh, the one among these products, which is phosphoglycer aldehyde, the only product which can proceed with the other stages of our glycolysis. Dihydroxyl acetone cannot continue other steps of glycolysis. So in order this uh, dihydroxyl acetone phosphate to continue in other procedures or steps stages of glycolysis, it must be isomerized into phosphoglycer aldehyde. Dihydroxyl acetone phosphate and phosphoglycer aldehyde, they are isomer of each other. 
So dihydroxyl acetone phosphate is an isomer of phosphoglycyl aldehyde. In stage number five, we have a isomerization of dihydroxyl acetone phosphate into phosphoglycyl aldehyde. So stage number five, dihydroxyl acetone phosphate is converted into its isomer, which is phosphoglycyl aldehyde, under the influence of phosphoglycyl isomerase. Phosphoglycyl isomerase. Now again, here uh, the first word phosphate is because these sugar they contain phosphate group. Glycyl, glycyl represents these sugar, which are glycyl aldehydes. And then I summarize it is because the enzyme catalyzes isomerization. So phosphoglycyl I summarize. Phospho, phosphate is because this sugar they contain phosphate, then glycyl is because of the nature of the sugar and isomerase it is because it catalyzes isomerization. So simply you did the step number five conversion of dihydroxyl acetone phosphate into it is isomer which is phosphoglycyl RDA. and in step number six we are continuing with the, the proceeding steps of glycolysis after splitting and uh, conversion of dihydroxyl acetone to this isomer so now to now stage is kumi is a glycolysis Mpaka tulipofika tumesha fika nusu. We have reached a half. Because it is very easy for you to remember the stage of, of glycolysis. The first stage of glycolysis, we are saying that uh, glucose is activated or it is phosphorylated to make it more reactive. The ATP which is used to phosphorylate glucose coming from uh, I mean the phosphate which is used to make glucose more reactive is coming from ATP. The reaction is catalyzed by is catalyzed by phosphohexokinase and glucose one comma six. I mean glucose six phosphate is formed in the first step. Glucose six phosphate is formed. Uh, phosphate is taken from ATP. It is phosphorylated to make it more reactive. The enzyme is exokinase. In the second step, we are doing arrangement, rearrangement. So glucose six phosphate it is rearranged, or glucose six phosphate it is isomerized into its isomer, which is fructose six phosphate. Then the reaction is catalyzed by phosphohexo isomerase. In the first step, we had phosphohexokinase because kinase is the enzyme which catalyzes phosphorylation. In the second step, phosphohexo isomerase. Then in the third step, further phosphorylation of fructose 6 phosphate is done to make it more reactive. The enzyme which catalyzes the reaction is now it is phosphofructokinase because the specific sugar which is uh, phosphorylated is fructose, so it is phosphofructose, not phosphohexo. Phosphofructokinase, phosphofructokinase, and we are making fructose one comma six phosphate. In the first step, we are doing splitting of fructose one comma six phosphate to form two sugars which are isomers of each other: dihydroxyl acetone phosphate and phosphoglycyl aldehyde. Dihydroxyl acetone phosphate is the ketone, and phosphoglycyl aldehyde is an aldehyde. So the enzyme is catalyzed by the, uh, I mean the reaction is catalyzed by the, the enzyme analyst or avionics. Then in the fifth step we are doing isomerization of our dihydroxyl acetone phosphate to phosphoglycyl aldehyde. Why it is because uh, phosphoglycyl uh, dihydroxyl acetone phosphate cannot continue with other steps of uh, glycolysis so we need uh, Convert it first into the phosphoglycyl aldehyde. So we have reached the half, half of glycolysis. You can get a breath. Then you can continue. 
the sixth step of uh, glycolysis. Mm -hmm. Now in the sixth step, each kipande cha piri ndo kidogo uwa kinakuwa kigumu kidogo kumbuka kwa sabu wa step zake uwa zinakuwa ni kama confusing. Kwa hii step ya sita, more phosphorylation occurs. More phosphorylation occurs. Lagini hapa phosphate ya itoki kwenye ATP. Kwa huu kumbuke kwenye stage ya kwanza tumetumia ATP moja. Stage ya piri tumetumia. Stage ya piri ya tumetumia ATP. Stage ya tatu tumetumia ATP moja. So ATP moja kwenye stage ya kwanza na ATP moja kwenye stage ya piri tumetumia ATP ngapi? Mbili. So hizo tunadaiwa. Kwenye stage ya sita tunafanya phosphorylation kwa kutumia inorganic phosphate. So hapa tunafanya phosphorylation lakini kwa kutumia inorganic phosphate. So more phosphorylation occur but in this case the source of phosphate is inorganic inorganic and not ATP. Two pairs of hydrogen atoms are removed. The reaction is catalyzed by Phosphoglycyl aldehyde dehydrogenase. So, because the reaction involves the removal of hydrogen, the enzyme catalyzing this reaction, it is dehydrogenase. Now, the name phosphoglycyl aldehyde comes simply from the sugar. So, don't get confused that the name of the enzyme is known and things like that because. Uh, the name of phosphoglycyl aldehyde is simply the sugar. But dehydrogenase, it is because the enzyme catalyzes the reaction which involves the removal of hydrogen. D means remover, decrease, or remove. Hydrogenase, hydrogen, then ACE. ACE is just the enzyme. So dehydrogenase, that means the reaction involves the remover of a uh, Hydrogen. So uh, this is the, the, the very important mechanism for you to remember. We have uh, we have phosphorylation of phosphoglycyl aldehyde, and as you can see, this is phosphoglycyl aldehyde. So already it contains phosphate. Phosphorylating it more will make it to have two phosphates will make it to have two phosphates. So uh, don't want about that because uh, we shall see the position of those two phosphates and what happens until at the end of the day we are ending up with pyruvate. So um, as I told you the enzyme which cut out the reaction it is phosphor phosphoglycyl aldehyde the hydrogens. So this is the fixed step and because we converted that uh, dihydroxyl acetone phosphate we converted that to form phosphoglycyl aldehyde. Kota kota na two molecules of phosphoglycyl aldehyde. Malake tulifo split fructose 6 phosphate kutengeneza dihydroxyl acetone phosphate pamoja nani dihydroxyl acetone phosphate pamoja na phosphoglycyl aldehyde ni sawa sana kusema tuna two molecules of phosphoglycyl aldehyde so naona kama ndo two molecules so tahitaji two inorganic phosphate ili kuweza kufanya phosphorylation so tako tuna two NAD then two NAD H2 kwa sabu gani kuna reaction hapo imetokea oxidation reaction in involve remove of hydrogen so hydrogen mbili zile pale lakini huku kutokana na kwamba hii ilikuwa ni aldehyde aldehyde ukifanyia oxidation by remove of hydrogen unakuja kupata carboxylic acid tunaona diphosphoglycerate glycerate glycerate this one is the carboxylic acid hapa ni sawa na natakaye sema diphosphoglyceric acid diphosphoglyceric acid au mungine angeza kusema ni glyceriti 1,3 I mean angeza kusema glyceriti 1,3 diphosphate ni wewe vila mbapu na mwaku zi arrange
lakini kwa mwalimu ambaye anaelewa it the same thing saying uh 1,3 diphosphorylase rate au mwingine akasema akasema ni ni glycine rate 1,3 diphosphate au mwingine akasema 1,3 diphosphoglyceric acid the same thing so we are making two molecules of uh, 1,3 diphosphoglyceride. Kwa phosphate moja ameattach kwenye kaboni ya kwanza mwingine kwenye kaboni ya tatu. Hii hapa tulikuwa tunasema phosphoglyceride aldehyde kwa sababu gani? Kwa sababu hii hapa ilikuwa phosphate yake ilikuwa ameattach kwenye kaboni ya kwanza. So there is no need to say one phosphoglyceride aldehyde. Lakini hapa tumesha remove hydrogen then to add another phosphate. Tungi remove hydrogen without adding any phosphate. Tungeendelea kusema I mean to remove hydrogen without adding any phosphate. Tungesema tu it is phosphoglycerate. Lakini because to me add phosphate nyingine so we must locate where the position of the of those phosphates. <coughs> Now the enzyme is phosphoglycerate added the hydrogens reaction involve addition of an organic phosphate and the removal of hydrogen. So in in the in the seventh step of our of respiration, in the seventh step of respiration, I mean the seventh step of glycolysis, a phosphate molecule is lost from both molecules of one comma three day phosphate glycerol. So to now protect a phosphate molecule, and this yield the two molecules of ATP from ADP So kwa sababu tunaenda na molecule mbili mbili maana yake hapa tutatengeneza two ATPs kwenye stage ya saba Stage ya saba ndio stage ya kwanza kutengeneza ATP kwenye glycolysis Stage ya kwanza kutengeneza glycolysis ni stage ya saba So tuna remove na 1,3 diphosphoglycerate is converted into 3 phosphoglycerate So our phosphate wako ni carbon ya kwanza anaondoka anabakia phosphate wako ni carbon kwenye carbon ya tatu So phosphate wako ni carbon ya kwanza anaondoka anabakia ile phosphate wako ni carbon ya tatu Na important feature hii reaction ni kwamba ni result in the formation of, of ATP So the enzyme catalyzing this reaction is diphosphoglycerate D phosphorylase Again I told you in the previous reaction kwamba D hydrogenase it is because the reaction involved the removal of hydrogen then D phosphorylase it is because the reaction involved the removal of phosphate Kono zokono kizukumbuka tu hizi enzyme D hydrogenase step ya sita D phosphorylase step ya saba ndio okay involved the removal phosphate So this reaction is very easy unatoka kwenye 1,3 diphosphoglycerate kwenda kwenye 3 phosphoglycerate two molecules Then from there stage number 8 tunafanya isomerization isomerization 3 phosphoglycerate is converted to 2 phosphoglycerate by phosphoglycerate mutes Now the enzyme mutes catalyzes isomerization so don't get confused kwamba kwa nini tusingesema phosphoglycerate isomerase kwa sababu actually ni kwamba tunafanya conversion of phosphoglycerate okay enzyme omuita mutes na pia na catalyze isomerization so get, don't get confused tunafanya conversion of 3 phosphoglycerate kuna kwenye 2 phosphoglycerate the enzyme is phosphoglycerate mutes na kwenye stage namba 9 stage namba 9 uh, stage namba 9 inakuwa kama hivyo an enzyme form a double bond in a substrate by extracting water molecule to form phosphoeno pyruvate kwa hiyo uh, hii hapa kama tulikuwa tunachola molecule yenyewe ndio ungeiona hiyo double bond formation lakini unachotakiwa kujua ni kwamba hapa tuna form nini phosphoeno pyruvate so we have two phosphoglycerate ambazo zinakuwa two molecules 
Then you have to enzyme enolase. Enolase. Enolase is resulting to formation of two molecules of phosphorino pyruvate by removal of two molecules of water. So, removal of water molecule and about the formation of double bond. Again, from there, the last step of glycolysis involves the formation of ATP again. A further pair of phosphate are removed, forming two more ATPs. The process is catalyzed by pyruvate kinase. Pyruvate kinase. As I told you, that kinase is the enzyme which, um, which it is involved in the Kinase is the enzyme which is involved in the process of our phosphorylation. Now, if we are doing a um, um, calculation for what happens in glycolysis, you can see we we use the two ATP to activate glucose, and uh, another ATP we use it to phosphorylate uh, fructose six phosphate. And we end up with the four ATP, two ATP in the fourth is uh, in the tenth stage, the last stage, and two ATP in the seventh stage. So we end up with four ATP. If we pay the debt, then we the end product of Greek recipe need two ATP molecules and the two NADH2 molecules, or it is the NAD molecules. So we are looking at the essential features of a glycolysis. First is the phosphorylation of sugar. This activates sugar and making it more reactive. The second feature of glycolysis is lysis. The phosphorylated six carbon sugar is split into three carbon sugar phosphate. This is the origin of the term glycolysis, which means sugar splitting. And the third feature of glycolysis is oxidation by dehydrogenation. Oxidation by dehydrogenation in the sixth step, but uh, other processes which are the phosphorylation and the formation of the ATP. Each three carbon phosphate is converted to pyruvate. This involves dehydrogenation, making a reduced NAD. It is not a molecule. And the last um, last essential feature of glycolysis is production of ATP directly. Production of ATP directly. So ATP is produced by hydrogen or by NADI. Like one among the essential features of glycolysis is direct production of our direct production of ATP. Now if you are looking at the summer, uh, summer of glycolysis, it takes place in 10 reaction. So if we are looking at the summer of glycolysis, the first reaction is catalyzed by phosphohexokinase, glucose to glucose 6 phosphate. Second reaction is glucose 6 phosphate to fructose 6 phosphate, phosphohexoisomerase. And sometimes in some of the questions you are asking to, to, to draw the, the flow chart of glycolysis. And this is the flow chart of glycolysis. Fructose 6 phosphate to fructose 1, 6 biphosphate or bisphosphate or diphosphate is phosphofructokinase, ATP na tumika tena. Then uh, fatani adolase, tuna brick kwenda kwenye dihydroxyl acetone phosphate na Phosphoglycyl aldehyde, two molecules, palina adding organic phosphate, atonafanya isomerization, kwanza step ya tano, isomerization, step ya sita na adi in organic phosphate na kurimungu ile pale dehydrogenase ana, ana, ana catalyze pale, ana catalyze dehydrogenase, toka hapo kuna, kuna, tukisha form 1, 3, tunafanya D, D phosphorylation under the presence of Diphosphoglycate, diphosphorylase, to repata 2 ATP apo. Ndengineza 3 uh, phosphoglycate. Kwa kutumia mutants, tunamukombati kwenda kwenye 2 phosphoglycate. Then, tukirimuvu watu, napata 
tunapata phosphorin au pyruvate ambaye in the presence of pyruvate kinase tunapata tunapata pyruvate in the end product of a gray cholesterol tunapata pyruvate the end product of gray cholesterol so um most of these reaction of gray cholesterol they are reversible most of these they are reversible however some they are irreversible some they are irreversible so um let me try to show you what reaction they are reversible and what reaction they are irreversible to increase your understanding about the gray cholesterol and its steps and that will mark the end of our our discussion on gray cholesterol in the next session we will start discussing about the link reaction on the cycle so i uh, continue to, to stay so that i, I will show you the the, the reactions Uh, th this is the diagram which can show you how glycolysis uh, occurs and the mechanism of uh, everything we explained in the previous uh, explanations uh, can be seen here so as you can see glucose in presence for ATP it is phosphorylated in the presence for exokinase enzyme exokinase so this is the structure of glucose the phosphate goes to attach in the carbon number 6 from here you can count carbon number 1 number 2 number 3 number 5 number number i mean number 1 number 2 number 3 number 4 number 5 number 6 so phosphate attaches on the carbon number 6 and because the phosphate attaches on carbon number 6 then it is glucose 6 phosphate glucose 6 phosphate so exokinase transfer phosphate group from ATP to glucose making it more chemically reactive the charge on the phosphate also trap the sugar in the in the cell so charging the phosphate help to trap more glucose into the cell that is an advantage and then in the second step of glucose 6 phosphate is converted to fructose 6 phosphate which is isomerization reaction the enzyme is phosphor glucoisomerase and sometimes for the sec of my notes it is written as phosphor hexo isomerase it is the same here they have just specialized it to gluco isomerase which is specifically for glucose so no problem even here the enzyme if you state it as the phosphor hexo kinase instead of saying hexo kinase it is the same now the enzyme is phosphor hexo uh, phosphor gluco isomerase it is isomerized glucose which is Uh, and aldehyde is isomerized into a ketone which is fructose and the phosphate is still attached to carbon number 6 so here we are starting counting carbon number 1 carbon number 2 carbon number 3 carbon number 4 carbon number 5 and then carbon number 6 there so fructose 6 uh, fructose 6 phosphate can be seen like this way and then in presence of ATP we are phosphorylating again in presence of the enzyme phosphofructokinase phosphofructokinase we are uh, phosphorylating fructose 6 phosphate to form fructose 1,6 phosphate so phosphofructokinase transfer a phosphate group from ATP to opposite end of the sugar of the end of the sugar in investigating a second molecule of ATP this is the key step for regulation of glycolysis a key step for regulation of our glycolysis um you can understand this um this statement that it is the key step for regulation of glycolysis because we have a, what we call a, the commis, committed steps committed steps in glycolysis we explained in in this session but later uh first understand these uh, steps then we we'll explain about the committed steps and the regulation of glycolysis also we have a um, from here fructose 1,6 that means one of the phosphate is attached in the carbon number 1 and another in carbon number 6 from there we have aldolase enzyme aldolase scripts the sugar molecule into two different three carbon sugar molecules so we are getting glycyl aldehyde three phosphate or three phosphoglycyl aldehyde and we are getting dihydroxyl acetone this is in in stage number 4 
we are getting these two sugars which are isomer of each other so as you can see this one is the ketone as you can see uh, here the diagram can tell you what is uh, what is going on mm, here this one is the ketone so um, yeah this one is the ketone as you can see the functional group and this one is an aldehyde as you can see the functional group so gracile aldehyde is an aldehyde where this one is the ketone so we need to convert this ketone to an aldehyde and the enzyme which is working here it is isomerase or sometimes you can call it the the phosphogracile aldehyde isomerase and among these two names is the same so in step number five we are doing conversion of uh, conversion uh, of uh, diphosphogracility di uh, diphos I mean three I mean dihydroxyl acetone phosphate we are converting it to three the phosphoglycyl aldehyde so we are converting a ketone into an aldehyde that is our step number five is how we we discussed it <coughs> and uh, in this next page the completion of the steps uh, of glycolysis the completion of the steps of glycolysis so as you can see mm, here we have uh, from stage number five we have we have formed the two molecules of um two molecules of um three phosphoglyce rdd so from there we have two nadi which are oxidized to make two nadi with the hydrogen which are reduced so here we are making two nadi the end product of our reactions of glycolysis also in this reaction involved the addition of two inorganic phosphate so triose phosphate the, the enzyme catalyzing here it is triose phosphate dihydrogenase or sometimes you can directly say is the phosphoglycyl aldehyde dihydrogenase because the the sugars which is dihydrogenated here it is the it, the, it is the Phosphoglycer aldehyde. So two sequential reaction. One three G. Uh, one. Ni. Ni glycerity. Three phosphate is oxidized by transfer of electron to nadi. So. The equation, uh, the reaction which started the oxidation, and then. The second is using energy from this exothermic redox reaction. This is the exothermic redox reaction. To transmute energy, a phosphate group is attached to oxidizing substrate, making a high energy product. So this is the, the product which is 1,3 base phosphate or 1,3 diphosphate. So 1,3 diphosphate, as you can see, we have a phosphate here and then you have another phosphate here. So this is carbon number one, which contain a functional group, an aldehyde, and this is carbon number two. This is carbon number two. So this is not an aldehyde again because uh, we have already oxidized it, so we got carboxylic acid. This is carboxylic acid. Uh, oxidation of uh, oxidation of uh, of uh, carbonate compound you get carboxylic acid so this is a carboxylic acid glycerate by phosphoglycerate is a carboxylic acid so carboxylic acid with one phosphate to carbon number one and one phosphate to carbon number three in the seventh step we have um, phosphoglycerokinase phosphoglycerokinase so in this uh, step we are 
we are combining ADP with phosphate from this molecule to get uh, two molecules of ATP. So in the third step, we have two molecules of ATP. The uh, phosphate group is transferred to ADP, subset level phosphorylation in exosomic reaction. So we have an abacama alivio, abacama alivio. Like the phosphate, we have a new one. Tattoo, phosphate, we have a new one. Anaondoka. Phosphate wa kwenye moja Anaondoka na Even if ambavu ambavu reaction is anakozi na Zinenda kufanyika mundani So hui phosphate ataondoka Akisha ondoka hui phosphate Atabakia phosphate hui hapa Lakini stage ya nane Ni localization O unalocate group So phosphoglycero mutase Phosphoglycero mutase Ina catalyze the transfer of our group from one carbon to another so uyo hapa manake to transfer toa kwenye carbon ya tatu tena kwenye carbon ya pili mute as you kwa utakuja kupata kitu kama each up now kwenye stage ya tisa tulisema kuna formation for formation of bond formation of bond kwenye stage ya tisa tukasema na remove water na tuna form bond kwa unazo kwa una hapo kitu ambachi kena tokea kwenye kwenye stage ya tisa unaweza kuona wewe mwenyewe kwamba nini kina kinatokea hapo kwenye stage ya tisa unaona huyu hapa alikuwa ni CH2O H alafu hapa pia pa kapa na nini pana hydrogen so kwenye stage ya tisa hii hydrogen na hii hapa CH2OH zinaondoka i mean in, inaondoka hii OH OH the group OH pamoja na nani na hydrogen wanaondoka wanaenda kumform nani water wanaenda kumform H2O ah wili wakishaondoka kwenda kumform water which is H2O hapa inakuwa formed nini double bond so this is the elimination reaction elimination reaction kwenye organic chemistry na kusoma kwa hapa kinachotokea ni double bond tunakuja kuform kitu kama hicho tunaita Phospho ino pyruvate Phospho ino pyruvate So Phospho ino pyruvate Yee siyo alcohol Na tunamuita pep Phospho ino pyruvate na muita pep Sasa Uyu phospho ino pyruvate yee siyo alcohol Wala Kwa sabu naona Nini complete yani Siyo ketone Alafu Siyo alcohol kusema hapa ngekuwa na hydrogen tungeza kusema so hiyo inakuwa ni intermediate ambayo ita result into formation of pyruvate at the end of the day tuta form pyruvate ambayo ni ule pari so nona pyruvate ya livyo is somehow different talk who you have kwa tumefanya deep phosphorylation tuka ningeza ATP kwa instagia kumi na enzi ya mwetu ni pyruvate kinase So from there we are going to the end product of our of our reactions in a quaninani ni pyruvate. So pyruvate contain a double bond here and pyruvate contain another double bond there. So this is the end product of our glycolysis. Now let me show you some of the committed steps in glycolysis and what are they some of them they are reversible, some of them they are irreversible. So uh, as we discussed the glycolysis is the splitting of sugar. Glycolysis is the splitting of sugar. And being splitting of sugar being splitting of sugar yeah it involves different things. Now uh, I want you to be with me. Uh, you can see the steps of glycolysis actually here they, they are not more detailed as how I explained in the previous book mm, as you can see here we have a major two phases of glycolysis as we said several times as you have said several times uh, that glycolysis involve uh, first it is first it is oxidizing Then after oxidizing, here we are doing breaking. So here we are breaking. 
I mean first is phosphorylating so we phosphorylate in step number one up to three we are breaking in step number four isomerizing in step number five then oxidizing in step number six after oxidizing we are we are doing deep phosphorylation that is the removal of phosphate now I don't want to discuss about this uh, so uh, because I will confuse you now to make sure discuss uh, mambo sana ukonyuma so nataka eh, nataka ni kuonyeshe ni kuonyeshe kitu hapa eh hizi enzi mtumisha discuss sana hizi so i don't wanna hapa ni atp invested huko ni atp generated huko maana kitu na invest tunaweka atp hapo tunatumia atp moja hapo tunatumia atp nyingine so we invest then after breaking na isomerization step number 5 in the nose of glycolysis which is ATP investigation um, I mean tunako na tuna invest tunawekeza ATP lakini huko tunako tunatoa ATP from step number 6 to to step number 10 naona substrate level phosphorylation lakini hii diagram bado na yenyewe haijaonyesha kile ambacho nataka niki niki eleze now i think this diagram and the, the next uh, slide from this one will explain you well what i want to 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 tell you unaona step number moja e arrow mechora direct unaona exokinase or sometimes you can call it is glucokinase e enzyme exokinase glucokinase phospho exokinase ni kwa hiyo sometimes unatokea una timu moja ambayo imezoeleka exokinase ili mwalimu usimchanganye now as you can see this is the first committed step When you are talking about committed step ni ile step ambayo inatokea sio reversible. Unaweza kaona kwamba R hapa iko pande moja. Ni tofauti na hapa R iko hapa juu na hapa chini. Unaona? Kwa hii reaction hii hapa chini hii maana hiyo reaction yetu na kwa nini ni reversible. Reaction goes in both direction. This one can be converted into this one. Asa reaction ikiwa ya namna hiyo huyo anaweza kawa converted kwenda kwa huyo na huyo anaweza kawa converted kwenda kwa huyo enzi amone catalyze reaction ni mmoja ni mmoja na nitaenda kueleza kwa nini enzi amo kwenye step ya kumi anaitwa pyruvate kinase kwa nini anaitwa pyruvate kinase wakati kazi yake sio ku phosphorylate pyruvate kwa nini kuna first committed step ni hapa second committed step ni hapa ambao tulisema Do step in control the speed of, of the whole process of bonin of glycolysis and for your level how we tend sana kujua kwamba hicho kinafanyaje inakuwaje ATP au end product of our glycolysis iki accumulate na kuja kuinhibit hii enzyme hii enzyme phosphofructokinase 1 for your level it is important for you to know it is phosphofructokinase not so much important for you to understand phosphofructokinase 1 e1 for your level 1 unaweza kacha na lakini what i explained ni kwamba huyu ni committed step first huyu ni second committed step na regulation of uh, speed of uh, glycolysis takes place here because this reaction is irreversible ni irreversible reaction lakini from there unaona hizo zote hii ni irreversible unaona hii hii ni reversible hii hapa ni reversible na hata tukitoka hapo unaona glycer aldehyde 3 phosphate glycer aldehyde 3 phosphate huyo hapa ndo anaendelea maana yake hapa tutakuwa na two molecules anaendelea huko kwenye other steps of glycolysis hata tukitoka hapo tukaenda kwenye other steps of glycolysis glycer aldehyde 3 phosphate unaona This reaction is reversible again. So it is not committed step. This one is also reversible. No no. The one that was for glycer kinase. Huyu ni phosphoglycer na huyu hapa ni phosphoglycer. Kuna maana ita kinase. Kinase kinase kazake ni kuongeza phosphate. Sasa unaweza kujiuliza kwamba inakuaje sasa? Hapa nakuta kwa mfano kule kwa vitabu vingine ameandika ameandika ni hawajaandika kinase in search kwa sababu unaona kwa mfano au buku ya hapa huyu enzyme muandika kama ni phosphoglycerol kinase 
Fosfo, Graysero, Kainis. Lakini Kainis kazi ya enzi ya mambaya nakuwa ni Kainis. Kazi yake huwe nakuwa ni addition of phosphate. So nazo kusimu kwamba how comes then kwamba Kainis ya nafanya kazi ya mbao isio yake. How comes then? Now the, the answer behind this uh, calling this enzyme was kindness it is because of the it is because of the reversibility of the reaction kwamba hii reaction kutoka huku kwenda hivi tuna remove we are removing inorganic phosphate but the reversible of this reaction kutoka huku kwenda hivi tuna add phosphate tuna add phosphate so if we are adding phosphate that's why it is called as phosphoglycerity kind of phosphoglycerity kind of stop tuna add phosphate una kind of phosphoglycerity kinase tuna add phosphate ko hiyo ni kwa sababu reaction yetu ni irreversible lakini from there ukija kwa mfano kwenye hii pia ni reversible phosphoglycerate mutase lakini hapa ni committed step third committed step in which to call na remove phosphate sasa kinase kinase ni enzi ya mambo inaweza kata hizi aina hiyo reaction either ku remove however normally it is addition of phosphate normally ni addition of phosphate kwa kwenye hizi diagram unaweza kuona kwamba substrate substrate na product ziko kwenye kwenye blue lakini enzymes zinakuwa ziko kwenye green is is in enzymes is in substrate pamoja na, na product so pia unaweza kuona kwamba kuna high energy intermediate yani huyu hapa pamoja na huyu hapa ndizo ambazo zinazalisha nini zinazalisha ATP hivyo ni basi ya vitu ambavyo ni vya muhimu kuvijua kwenye glycolysis this marks the end of our discussion about glycolysis if you need this book um, you can just follow one among my videos ambazo nilitoa kwenye channel na nielezea jinsi ya ku download this campbell biology i explained how to download this campbell biology um, otherwise unaweza kupata notes za respiration toka kipaji hapo kama unataka hichi kitabu you can communicate with me or you can download it from online this is what the end of our session let me wish you nice studies